from KSAT 12. The Night Beat starts right now. New stay home work safe orders announced and while more businesses are open, the city and county are still urging residents to stay at home as much as possible. Masks are also still mandatory and while there won't be any fines, the night team's Jaffney Gray reports there could be other ways of keeping the rule enforced. We're just days away from new businesses opening and now a new stay home work safe order will go into effect at midnight. Uh, this is to ensure that we continue to do our jobs to protect the public and that we can get through this period of the containment of COVID-19. Staying home as much as possible remains the message. Masks are required and while there is no fine for those who don't follow the rule, businesses could push for a criminal trespass charge if you're not wearing one on the property. So it may not have the fine, uh, but there's other measures in, to make sure that people are doing that. Another requirement in their orders. We are requiring, if you come to any county facility, we're requiring a uh, uh, temperature test and we're requiring that uh, you wear a face mask when you come in. Governor Abbott green-lighted retail businesses, movie theaters, and restaurants to start operating Friday as long as they limit occupancy to 25%. Lines will also have to be spaced out to where people can practice social distancing. But when new businesses opening, does that mean child care will be expanded since it currently only takes our current definition of essential workers into play? There's not clarity from the state yet as to whether now that reopened businesses are going to be opened on Friday, whether then that additional scope for child care to be open to those workers, that's not clear from the state yet. What we can count on is an extension of the ban on evictions. Wolf reminded residents that there will be no evictions or foreclosures until May 18th. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. And while those orders go into effect in less than two hours, tomorrow City Council will take up a vote to extend the measures until May 19th. Well, let's take a look at the latest numbers. Tonight, Bear County has 1,326 confirmed cases of COVID-19. 45% of patients have recovered, but more than half are still active cases. 56 people are currently in the hospital and the death toll has risen by two tonight for a total of 46 deaths. The mayor today responded to questions on testing and a reported decrease in demand for testing. Our Metro Health team and the testing task force has been scratching their head about uh, a little bit, but it does ebb and flow. So we did see a, a little bit of a downturn uh, last few days, uh, but it started to pick up again. In fact, our numbers uh, today at Freeman uh, were back where they were probably a couple of weeks ago. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says it's hard to read too much into the data. The city is hoping to increase testing to around 3,000 tests a day, as well as increase tracking measures. And when it comes to COVID cases in the jail, we have learned 98 inmates have tested positive. That's 34 cases since yesterday. There are 40 cases of COVID-19 among detention deputies at the Bear County Sheriff's Office. That's five new cases since yesterday. Taking a look at the cases of COVID-19 in our surrounding counties tonight, a third resident is dead from the Frank M. Tejeda State Veterans Home in Floresville. That's located in Wilson County, which is now reporting 31 cases. Hayes County reporting 160, Comal County at 52, Guadalupe remains at 80 tonight, the same as yesterday. They are, however, reporting more recoveries for a total of 52 people who have recovered in Guadalupe County. Well, businesses are beginning to reopen all throughout the state, but many people are finding themselves unable to return to work for various reasons aside from closures. For some, it's fear of contracting COVID-19, while others may need to stay home with the kids. The night team's Devin Clark tells us how Texas unemployment guidelines may be changing to try to accommodate these ever-changing times. Currently, I have three staff members. David Garcia owns Statue of Design and Number 9 Floral and Gifts. Services include wedding event planning and hotel floral design. He's able to stay afloat and pay his workers with the help of a Paycheck Protection Program or PPP loan. So my concern is that once the PPP runs out and there's no funds to pay anybody. Even though he'll be able to reopen and allow a limited number of customers into a store, he says he's not ready to because of the concern of COVID-19 spreading. 
we have you know thousands of products here in our store that anyone that comes in picks up and looks at decides they don't want it and put it back on the shelves garcia adds that many people are canceling or postponing uh, events which means a loss in revenue for him and possibly his employees am i basically telling everyone to go back on unemployment. The bigger question is, will his employees still be eligible? The Texas Workforce Commission says workers experiencing reduced hours due to COVID-19 may be eligible for some benefits as long as they submit their wages. And right now, the TWC is working on eligibility guidelines for people who technically can go back to work but aren't able to for various reasons, including childcare, COVID-19 sickness, caretaking needs, and possibly fear or concern of contracting the coronavirus. Garcia, looking forward to the day his business is able to pick back up again safely. So we're just hopeful. We're gonna keep our fingers crossed for the next eight weeks. And then at that point, hopefully something will turn around or change for the better. Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. The San Antonio Food Bank is using a new strategy to get food to people. They've done distributions, but what about seniors who can't get to those events? Well, the nonprofit is looking for volunteers who can take food to them. The number of seniors who need help has gone up during the pandemic. The food bank is looking for people who can make five deliveries per trip in their car and drop off the food without making contact with the person getting the food. The food bank needs volunteers in almost every part of the organization as well. If you can help them out, go to safoodbank.org, click on the volunteer link and fill out the form. Then expect an email back with the details. They often go unnoticed, but according to the second Barifax KSAT Rivard report poll, many participants want attention put on our city's homeless problem. As we make our way through the pandemic, nursing students and graduates from a local university are helping care for the homeless at the Haven for Hope Clinic at an overflow hotel in downtown. The night team's Patty Santos tells us this type of work is going to be even more important as time goes on. The homeless is a person just like you and I. So what you do for one person, you do for all people. Just because they're homeless, I would do the same for this homeless person as I would do for you. They just need someone to care for them, and we're here to do that. University of Incarnate Word graduate nurses, undergraduate students, and faculty have been helping to care for the homeless at the Haven for Hope Clinic located inside the Overflow Hotel in downtown. They do anything from managing the care of diabetes, medication, hypertension, to just basic first aid. There's also a physician that is there on site as well to uh, manage the care. The nurses say their work is vital during these crucial times. That is what public, nurse, public health nursing is. You're out in the grounds outreaching to those who need us the most. According to the most recent Bear Facts KSAT Rivard Report poll, when voters were asked an open-ended question about what the most serious issue facing San Antonio was, that they wanted local governments to do something about homelessness ranked at the top, followed by COVID-19 and crime. And as we move out of the pandemic, city officials worry the problem will only increase. We're providing more resources in many cases for uh, agencies that provide relief. These nurses say they'll be ready to face the task ahead. Everything has changed and what we are are innovators. We have to change with the times that we're in. Patty Santos, KSET 12 News. And while the homeless situation is a top priority among poll participants, it wasn't the only topic up for discussion. We actually held a virtual town hall with the Bear Facts team, San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf to discuss this round of results, which included the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Highlights from that discussion coming up later in this show. We just missed the rainfall earlier this morning here in San Antonio, but locations east of town got a nice little soaking, especially from San Marcos, New Braunfels, towards Seguin Gonzalez, and even the Yoakum toward Hallettsville area. Some good rainfall. We were on the tail end tail end of that activity. Now the focus has shifted to cooler temperatures. Right now we're 73 at the airport in San Antonio, but you go to Port SA 68, 69 Stinson, 69 Bull Verde and Canyon Lake at 70. Tomorrow morning we will be running below average. Widespread low to mid 50s for low temperatures to start your day 
on your Thursday. Now the humidity and the heat, of course, is going to return. We'll talk more about that coming up. Thank you, Adam. The defenders looking for answers after a Bear County Sheriff's court employee was accused of some suspicious, some suspicious activity overnight. That employee taken into custody after being accused of making unauthorized traffic stops in a decked out SUV. While it appears to be a law enforcement vehicle, public records show it is privately registered to the BCSO employee. That's the SUV we're talking about. A Northside ISD police officer intervened after witnessing two traffic stops. That employee was let go without being criminally charged, but the Bear County Sheriff's Office is asking for the public's help in this investigation. If you believe you may have been stopped by this employee in the areas of Loop 410, Calabra, and Reed Road last night, you're asked to call 335-5124 or email bcsotips at bear.org. Still ahead, lions, tigers, bears, let's drive. The new experience the San Antonio Zoo is launching to bring in guests safely and how they're also going digital. The plus concerns over coronavirus, a change in top issues, and a ranking when it comes to approval ratings. The highlights from tonight's Bearfax case at Rivard Report Poll Town Hall coming up. And Freeman Coliseum is a site for many responses to COVID-19. Tonight, a look at the decontamination units and how they can help those on the front lines here at home and beyond. It's coming up next on the Night Beat. It was our first walkthrough of the alternative care facility at the Freeman Coliseum. The city and county hope it won't be needed, but it is on standby as we move closer to reopening businesses. 80 beds are set up in case our hospital system becomes overwhelmed. This facility will not house COVID-19 patients. Instead, it will be for people recovering from surgeries or minor injuries. We also got a look at another building at the Freeman Coliseum that's being used in the COVID-19 response. But instead of housing beds, it's holding decontamination units. Yeah, the, the equipment there can decontaminate thousands of masks a day. Our Tiffany Huertas gets an inside look. We're running out of PPE. You hear it all over the country. During the coronavirus pandemic, getting personal protective equipment or PPE has been a challenge for some agencies. San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood says these decontamination units could help. This equipment made by the company Battelle can decontaminate N95 respirators using hydrogen peroxide vapor. These Battelle systems can decontaminate up to 80,000 masks a day. We're going to be able to recycle masks get those masks clean, sanitized, make sure that they're safe, and then return the masks that the agency sends us back to them. Hood says they are working with 28 counties. For everyone else, so smaller jurisdictions that really need the help, the nursing homes, all of those folks will be able to bring their mask here and we'll be able to decontaminate them. The protective equipment is especially crucial for hospitals. A spokesperson for University Health System says the entire system uses about 3,500 masks, 46,000 pairs of gloves, and 3,000 gowns just in one day. Our first responders are all looking at three plus weeks of PPE availability right now is what we look at every single day. But again, understanding our burn rates could change. Chief Hood says PPE is crucial for first responders too. You've seen that we've had a, uh, an outbreak at Station 14 and we're wearing PPE. Uh, we're doing everything that we can, but for to have the confidence to send your folks out into homes and dealing with people that are, are potentially sick, you need to make sure that you have PPE. Chief Hood says four decontamination units will be up and running by this weekend. Tiffany Huertas, KSA 12 News. All right, check this out. The San Antonio Zoo offering a new way to bring in visitors safely. This weekend, they are offering a drive through experience, a preview posted on the zoo's Facebook page. The San Antonio Zoo closed on March 14th has had to come up with new ways to generate income. The drive through experience will include a guided educational audio tour. There will also be options along the route for curbside food and beverage. The drive through zoo will be happening Friday through Sunday from 10 in the morning till 5 in the afternoon. Admission is $40 per vehicle for non pass holders. Guests are encouraged to buy their tickets online before they arrive, but there is curbside ticket sales as well. We have a link on KSAT.com. By the way, vehicle size will be limited to about the size of a Chevy Tahoe SUV and nothing bigger.
And with the zoo's closure, tours have also gone digital with virtual and educational visits on their Facebook page. Experts remain on hand to take care of the animals. Today, animal care specialist Nikki featured lorikeets, which are native to Australia. They have very fun colors, as you can see here, uh, and they are a member of the parrot family. These guys specialize in eating different types of fruits, and they also, which is the really cool fact about them, is they drink nectar out of flowers. Lorikeets, the zoo, which is a nonprofit, is now also opening up an emergency fund to help keep the facility running amid the pandemic. You can donate at sazoo.org. That's really I, neat. I wow. am guessing that yeah. drive through zoo thing is going to be really popular. Will be very popular. Yes. That's my, my thought That's exactly. Just, just my thought. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good idea, though. Yeah. Great idea. Meantime, let's take a live look downtown. 73 degrees out there right now. Yeah, we have a nice clear sky, crisp sky, no humidity, or I should say uh, lack of humidity. It's uh, very comfortable out there and good visibility. And actually, I want to read this to you because this just came in from a viewer, and I've fielded a couple of these questions before we jump into the forecast. Uh, live on the north side of town. I uh, wanted to find out if there's any you know, meteorological or astronomical events going on. I saw a string of lights moving overhead. They were very high in the sky, like pinpoints, but they're going in a line from north to to south. Those are SpaceX's Starlink satellites. They have launched, launched over 400 of them right now, and this is in an attempt to bring broadband internet to every corner of the Earth. They have approval for, I think, over 11 or 12,000 satellites in the years to come. They're low uh, orbiting satellites. So, right SpaceX now. SpaceX is Elon Musk. Yes, that is Elon deal, Musk's right? company. Tesla guy, yeah. Exactly. And uh, they are posing an issue for sky observations at night and for uh, astronomers right now. They're uh, supposedly mitigating that with future satellites. Anyway, you can research more about that. It's a, it's a long, long, long story you can read about. But yes, if you see those string of pearls in the night sky, those are the Starlink satellites moving overhead. Right now, just over 400 of them. All right, so let's take a look at our day today, particularly our wind gusts. It was gusty out there, especially this morning when that cold front moved in. And even with some storms, Austin had a gust of 54. Here in San Antonio, we gusted to nearly 40 miles per hour. Right now, not as breezy. Actually, a nice, calm wind for a good chunk of South Texas. And overnight, we're, you're not going to notice the breeze like you did throughout the day today. Now, the north wind, look what it did to our dew points. They're down 20 to 30 degrees. Yeah, big impact on the humidity level and the moisture content of the air. Dew points now right around 40 degrees in San Antonio, some areas in the 50s, but for the most part, we're in the 40s. So we have that dry air that's in place. I know some of you love the humidity. Don't worry, your time will be coming as we get into the weekend. So the next couple of days, Thursday, Friday, lack of humidity in the air, really comfortable and crisp, and that's gonna mean some cooler mornings. Then we get to the weekend and next week, and you'll notice an addition of the humidity. Not only will the humidity return, but with it, comes the heat as well. That's by the weekend and into next week. We'll see temperatures back into the 90s. So right now we're 60s and 70s. Hondo's at 65, Kerrville 62, Pleasanton 63, 73 at the airport in San Antonio. Quiet weather pattern, but here's what's going to help crank up the heat in the days ahead. Look at the overall upper level wind flow and the steering flow. Big dip east of the Mississippi. That's where the action is right now with that big uh, upper level trough and then we have the big blue H. We're all familiar with that. That's over the desert southwest, giving them a little bit of a heat wave right now. Transitioning from the the dip to the big ridge, it's going to be some sunny, low humidity days, some pleasant days. But once the big blue H starts to settle overhead by the weekend, that's when we turn up the heat a little bit. Okay? So here we go. Temperatures tomorrow morning mid 50s, some locations lower 50s. By the noon hour, 78 and will be 86 in the afternoon. Low humidity, not much of a breeze out there. Wall to wall sunshine. Pretty much the same story into Friday. Saturday, humidity's back. That's going to mean those low gray clouds in the morning, not just on Saturday, but every morning through the weekend and all the way into the early part of next week, despite sunny afternoons. So hotter with higher humidity, temperatures well into the 90s until the next cool front hits early next Tuesday. Right now, unfortunately, no good chance of rain. All right, thanks, Adam. All right, some belt tightening 
being talked about in the NFL, Greg. Yeah, this caught us off guard because this is one league that has not been as effective as other major league sports organizations have been so far in the COVID-19 pandemic. But right now, furloughs and staff reductions are the order of the day, including a major pay cut for the commissioner himself. When we come back, the details released today by Roger Goodell and a former Spur helping San Antonio and veterans coming up. are starting a fundraiser to raise money for the San Antonio Food Bank. I hear that's a huge, huge need right now. Um, I just want to encourage you guys who are watching this to, to donate to our fundraiser. Local athletes such as the Rams' Malcolm Brown from both the pro and college ranks are launching a fundraiser for the San Antonio Food Bank and Big Board Sports, but first. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell has announced staff furloughs, salary reductions, and cuts to the NFL's pension plan and memo sent to the league office staff in New York and employees at NFL Films and the NFL Network. At the same time, Goodell says he has voluntarily reduced his own salary from $40 million to $0 effective last month. Goodell says the league is still preparing for a full 20 2020 season, but admits difficult decisions had to be made because of the economic consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. In the memo obtained by CNN, Goodell is quoted as saying the downtime has affected all of us as well as our fans, our business partners, and our clubs. Pay reductions are targeted for management level employees who make more than $100,000 and no employee with a base salary below that amount will be affected by the reduction. Goodell also adds that those employees who are unable to perform their duties from home and whose workload has been significantly reduced will be furloughed with the hopes of reinstating those employees in a few months. This comes after the NFL set viewing records for their first ever virtual draft after having to cancel their draft party except for Las Vegas due to the coronavirus. So Dallas Cowboys have signed veteran cornerback Daryl Worley to add to their stable of defensive backs that include recent draft picks Trayvon Diggs out of Alabama, Reggie Robinson from Tulsa. Worley, who is 6'1", 215 pounds, played for the Raiders last year. They're signing a free agent contract in 2018 and was able to finish with an interception, fumble recovery, eight passes defense, and 58 tackles, 51 solo. Now, remember, he signed with the Raiders after he was released by the Eagles after the NFL reported he was arrested when he was found passed out on his vehicle blocking the highway in his career. Worley has five career interceptions, which is more than any Dallas cornerback since Terrence Newman had four in 2011. Former Green Bay Packers great Brett Favre believes Aaron Rodgers will follow the same career path that he did and finish his career elsewhere. That's after the Packers selected quarterback Jordan Love in the first round of the NFL draft last week. That's what Favre told NBC Sports Network today, confirming he has talked to Favre since the Packers decided to trade up four spots to pick Love at 26 and said he was surprised they went in that direction. Favre, who's now 36, has four years remaining. I should say uh, Rodgers, who is 36, has four years remaining on his $134 million contract extension. He signed in 2018. The Packers have come under criticism for not upgrading their offense in the trade that included not picking a single wide receiver. Former Spur and San Antonio resident George Hill doing his part to help community during the coronavirus. A Milwaukee Bucks guard providing support to feed San Antonio first responders, local military families and veterans at high risk for COVID-19. Hill has already donated $25,000 to wish for our heroes and feeding local families. And today he took it a step further. George, along with the wish for our heroes founder, Jeff Wells, met at the grill in Leon Springs to pick up the food that had been prepared and then deliver the meals to the homes of veterans of World War II. Just coming out here trying to impact lives and help as much as we can. You know, feed people, feed veterans, uh, things like that. I mean, I love it. You know, they sacrifice their life for us to, to have us breathe the fresh air and things like that. So anything we can do to keep them safe and to keep them in the house and have a good meal, uh, it's all for it. All right, Wish for Our Heroes is a national charity dedicated to assisting military families with basic needs such as food, shelter, transportation, and medical needs. The NCAA top governing body says it supports a proposal to allow college athletes to sign endorsement contracts and receive payment for outside work provided that the schools they attend are not involved in the payments. It allows athletes to make money off their names, images, and likenesses. In the news release, the NCAA says athletes will be allowed to appear in advertisements and can reference the sport or school but cannot use school logos. Baseball Hall of Fame ceremonies canceled next.
The Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown has announced it has canceled the July 26 induction ceremony for the class of 2020 that includes Derek Jeter and Larry Walker due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Instead, the 2020 class will be inducted in next year's induction ceremonies along with any additional choices on July 25th, 2021. At the same time, Major League Baseball is discussing plans to start their season in June and allow teams to play in their home ballparks through a realignment. Now, that's according to USA Today that would have teams placed in three divisions based on location, not whether or not they're in the American or National Leagues. With games opening in Texas, Arizona, and Florida for the first few weeks, the plan would reduce travel and include games without fans to start. Anything helps. The goal is 50,000, but I easy to feel like easily we can get past that. Count the Longhorns and former Steel star Caden Stearns is part of the local athletes raising money to help feed those in need at safoodbank.org. Tackle COVID-19. It's great to see all these young men doing that for the city of San Antonio and for the San Antonio Food Bank, which does so much for our community. Absolutely. Thank you, Greg. Still ahead, the Las Vegas Strip remains silent tonight, but one resort is now preparing to reopen with a list of hundreds of protocols. How Vegas may change next on the Night Beat. Another grim milestone reached in the United States. More than 60,000 people killed by the coronavirus. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez reports the death toll is still rising as we learn of a sign of hope in the battle against COVID-19. The number of COVID-19 cases still surging in some parts of the country, including Massachusetts and Illinois. And in hardest hit New York City, this horrific scene. Police finding at least 100 bodies in unrefrigerated trucks outside of this funeral home. The director saying they ran out of room. But amidst the devastating stories linked to this pandemic, new hope in treating coronavirus patients. The country's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, announced announcing the drug remdesivir, originally tested for Ebola, may be effective in treating COVID-19, according to preliminary results from an NIH study. The data shows that remdesivir has a clear-cut, significant, positive effect in diminishing the time to recovery. This is really quite important. It's highly significant. The drug for now only given to very sick patients in hospitals. More research is still being done. A new study just published in The Lancet done in China using remdesivir showed no significant effect. So the NIH study finding is encouraging. Many infectious disease experts find it promising. Optimism as Pfizer announces they'll test a potential vaccine as early as next week that the pharma giant says could be available for emergency use in the fall. But until then, concerns remain about large crowds. These mourners packing the streets of Brooklyn for an Orthodox Jewish funeral. In at least 11 other states, a slow return to normal. Some businesses reopening. Seven more states will allow the same by the end of the week. And despite worries about the possibility of a resurgence in cases, President Trump going even further, saying he hopes to be able to hold mega rallies before November, adding he's optimistic about sports venues being filled soon as well. I want to go back to where it was. That's where we're going to be. Look, this thing will pass. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. And meanwhile, hotels and casinos on the Las Vegas Strip have started releasing their safety plans as they plan to open up. The most recently announced safety plan was from the Venetian. It lists 800 new protocols. That policy includes installing thermal scanners that will allow discrete temperature checks at every resort entry point for all team members and guests. The hotel will provide face masks to guests, though it will not require people to wear them. The Venetian says it will also enforce social distancing and disinfectant high touch surfaces. The resort says it will disinfect chips in the casino every two hours, rearrange slot machines to allow for distancing and employ a limit of three chairs for table games. The Venetian is not currently accepting reservations before May 31st. Well, here at home, Toyota vehicle production in North America is being postponed for one week. Production was set to begin next week before the announcement was made today. Vehicle production is expected to resume on the week of May 11th. A spokesperson for Toyota says they intend to gradually resume operations in compliance with federal health guidelines and local and state ordinances. No details were given about why they decided to postpone.
Well, technology has been able to help me bring many of us together while physically keeping us apart. But when it comes to the court system, the administrative court judge says there are some serious issues even weeks after transitioning to a new system. Pleas are among the issues resolved during these remote hearings conducted through a program called Zoom. Jury service is still on hold, so hearings and pleas are the only options for resolving a case. That means some cases are simply reset, and resetting any case creates a big problem. Well, the dockets have been impacted pretty significantly. Um, I know a week ago, each district court, there's 10 criminal district courts, each court was over um, 100 cases beyond its dockets. That leaves over... That leaves more than a thousand cases pending in just the criminal district courts. Still, Administrative Judge Ron Ron Hell said remote hearings are more than likely here to stay. Concerns of someone getting COVID-19 within the home. It is one of the biggest worries when it comes to the pandemic here in Bear County. That's at least according to the Bear Facts case at Rivard Report poll. It's one of many emotions being felt at this time of crisis. Uh, one of the things that comes up is the lack of the ability to control what's going on around us causes for many people severe anxiety, frustration, depression, and other kinds of symptoms. The poll also revealed signs that being hopeful is another emotion coming into play. When it comes to looking forward, many are wanting to socialize again with friends and family. And distance learning in the midst of this pandemic was also up for discussion in the Bear Facts case at Rivard Report poll. 48% are saying distance learning is not productive, with only 33% thinking distance learning is extremely or very productive. Many parents dealing with the adjustment as schools remain closed for the rest of the school year. And these are just some of the issues that the second Bear Facts case at Rivard Report poll took into account. More than 650 registered voters participated. And today we held a virtual town hall and brought in the Bear Facts team, Robert Rivard from the Rivard Report, and San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf to discuss the poll's results and much more. It's an event we first started at 6.30 and then wrapped up online. Here are some of the highlights. Welcome to the start of our virtual Bear Facts KSAT Rivard Report poll virtual town hall. The requirements for the face coverings for anybody above 10. Yeah. That was not required in the state order. How do you, how do you reconcile those things? It's in the orders that you have to wear a mask. Um, and businesses have the uh, have the ability to uh, require masks when you walk in. So let's protect one another. Citizens would be a lot more comfortable if we were in a state where the top uh, municipal officials and the governor were working in concert and the governor was not acting unilaterally. Why is the city opening when a member of the health team says it's too soon? Can the mayor override the governor? Can the judge override the governor? He's taking a risk uh, by opening these things up before those are indicated by the health professionals. We won't know the effect of it. Crime in February, in the February poll we did, was the number one concern. That has kind of dropped down now, right. and, and homelessness is now the number one concern. This is a huge challenge for uh, shelter in place orders because obviously we have some of the access points for uh, shelters closed off to maintain social distancing. So we've set up different services around the city where we know encampments are to provide not just uh, food and other essentials, but also to screen people to, to uh, identify any vectors for disease and get people into testing and, and treatment if necessary. Let's, let's end with that. Like the, the things that people are most looking forward to, and I want to get to that poll, socializing with friends and family, 26%, eating out 14%, exercising 11%, going back to work 10%, attending religious services 7%. But do the right things, we'll work our way through it, we'll get the economy to come back, and we're going to do everything we can to bring prosperity. And let's focus on the economy we want to build, not just going back to the one we had before, because keep in mind, the one we had before had 60,000 people lined up on a weekly basis at the food bank. We can be better than that and stronger than that, but it's going to take a concerted effort.
That was just some of tonight's town hall. Our web team has the full video online right now at KSAT.com. You'll be able to find it on our homepage. Well, it is an effort to place a spotlight on our local nonprofits amid the pandemic. Today's Wishlist Wednesday is featuring the Ronald McDonald House Charities. Well, the Ronald McDonald House is a home away from home for critically ill and injured children who come to San Antonio for medical care. Unfortunately, right now, we are temporarily without families out of caution for their safety and the safety of our staff. However, we were able to make arrangements for the families to stay in hotels and other places temporarily until we're ready to reopen and feel like it's safe for them to be here. Crews are doing some maintenance on the home while families are out and they could still use some help. While do some donations were dropped off today, you can also donate money online or shop from their Amazon wish list. You can find a list of needed supplies and more information under the community section of KSAT.com. You're still ahead. What is Hollywood's future amid the pandemic? We're going to take a look at the potential future for the Academy Awards and movies as we know them. And a birthday bash complete with a crown, balloons, and cars. The secret to turning 105 coming up on the Night Beats. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. COVID-19 has crept up on wedding dates, although some couples had to cancel their events. Jesse de Goyado says others are adapting to the changes. How's this for a marriage proposal? On the 50-yard line, much less, at Royal Memorial Stadium. Morgan Reitelhuber and Grant Webin planned to be married next month until a worldwide pandemic hit. They were sad having to postpone it until August. But, of course... Most of it came from a place of understanding. We caught it early enough that uh, we were able to not have to cancel the wedding entirely. We were able to just push it back a few months. Florist David Garcia knows about change in plans. His spring calendar wide open. The cooler, once filled with fresh flowers, is empty for now. Garcia says luckily he has other weddings and events still happening this fall. Now, in addition, we have our secondary batch, which is all of the postponements that are, are scheduled. Even then, he says those weddings may still have to be downsized for social distancing. Yeah, I'm not so sure that a lot of brides are going to be willing to adjust their guest counts. Morgan and Grant say they hope everyone they invited can join them in August, unlike their first option. Keep the date and not throw a huge wedding and run to the courthouse and get married. No one's going to be mad at you for making the decision if you decide you want to run to the courthouse. We won't hold ourselves to a TV interview that that we're going to go run to the courthouse and get married. Though. There will be a wedding one way or the other. Jesse de Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Today is Irene Wilson's 105th birthday. She recently moved to San Antonio to be near family, and today she was surprised with the drive by birthday parade. Wilson's daughter says she was able to take her mother to visit parts of San Antonio before the pandemic. And Wilson's 98 year old sister also visited ahead of COVID-19. Wilson has said her secret to a long life is filling it with people. She did that today. Today's ceremony was a chance to get to see so many people on such a special day. On her 100th birthday, she said she had so much fun, she wanted to do it again next year. And I guess she liked it so much, we've been doing it year after year after year to 105 now. None quite like today, I doubt. Wilson has four children, seven grandchildren, and seven great-grandchildren. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's like it was a party out there. I know. <laughs> Happy and for birthday, a, Irene. For yeah. 105? That's, yes. Not only that, she may not remember it, but she made it through Spanish. Flu. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now Very COVID-19. Yeah. Not her first pandemic. <laughs> no, it's not. All right. well, most of us it is. Yeah. Yes. All right. 73 degrees out there. Today was beautiful. It was a nice day today. If you like today, I think the next couple of days you'll like even more, especially those cooler mornings that'll be running a little below average temperature wise. So before we jump into that, let's take a look at our lake levels. It's that time of year. We like to always keep a close eye on this and we're not quite at the levels we were last year at this time. Now Medina Lake 71% full. 
13 feet below the conservation pool. Last year at this time, it was basically right up there at full. Canyon Lake, 94% full and three, three feet below the conservation pool. So we had some high thin clouds this evening, not enough to really make for a extra colorful sunset, but it was still very pleasant out there. Better visibility now. We got rid of the humidity, the haze, and all that smoke that was in the air yesterday. So a clearer and more crisp color to the sky. 87, that was our high, average being 83. And tomorrow the high is going to be similar. It's just the morning is going to be quite a bit cooler. 71 degrees outside right now. There's that dew point of 39, drier air. And that dry air, clear sky, and calm wind all allows the temperatures to fall off quickly and very efficiently too. Good radiational cooling. So Catula is at 73, 68 Rock Springs, already 59 in Junction, Fredericksburg at 56. Here in San Antonio, we're at 71. Now by 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, I'm expecting widespread 50s. That's 55 Pleasanton, 53 in Kerrville, 53 in Gonzales. You get a little closer into Bear County. Helotus about 54, Bernie 51 degrees in the morning. So even Lavernia 53. So you'll notice some cooler temperatures to start the day, but we will warm up pretty quickly and efficiently. We'll still make it into the mid 80s again tomorrow, not like today. Then by Friday, upper 80s, still low humidity. And look what happens into the weekend. We crank up the heat more, not only back into the 90s, but also the humidity is going to be in place as well. So we'll be looking at some heat indices that'll be up there, along with the actual heat that's in place. That mugginess is going to add to it. Quiet weather right now across the state. The good moisture is all off to the east of us and all the activity here on the eastern third of the country, basically east of the Mississippi. That's because of that big dip in the upper level flow. Some of our eastern counties, Lavaca County, Gonzales County and DeWitt County, they got some of the tail end rainfall from that early this morning before sunrise. Now it's all out of here and we're transitioning into the big upper level high, the big blue H, and it's going to start pressing down on us by the weekend. That's why we'll see those temperatures climb up. So there's our upper level steering flow back to hazy, hot and humid conditions on Saturday. So if you like that, well, your time's going to come this weekend. Otherwise, hey, enjoy the next couple of days. Tomorrow, here's the details. Wall to wall sunshine, 55 at 7 a.m. By noon, 78. And then at 4 p.m., 86. Not much of a breeze out there and still a lack of humidity. Friday's going to be very similar. Just tack on a couple of degrees, but still in the 50s in the morning. Then Saturday, 92. Once that humidity returns, we'll get back into the very familiar pattern of low morning clouds up through about 9 to 11 a.m. and then afternoon sunshine. And I think the warmest we'll get is about 95, 96 by Monday and Tuesday. And actually right now it wouldn't be, I, it wouldn't surprise me if we trend Tuesday up a few more degrees into the mm. upper 90s before Ouch. the next cool front comes. All right. Thank you, Adam. The coronavirus changing the movie industry. It's more than just theaters changing operations. How Hollywood is changing. Coming up. Hollywood now making some adjustments in response to the many movie theaters still closed. So many of us are instead watching films from home. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez tells us how next year's Academy Awards will be different and how our new normal could be impacting the movie industry. Next year's Academy Awards still nearly 10 months away, but already the coronavirus pandemic is leading to changes. Normally, a film has to be shown for at least a week in Los Angeles theaters to qualify for nomination for Best Picture and in other Oscars categories. But with coronavirus shutdowns in L.A. and across the country, the Academy now bending those rules, saying that for the 2021 awards only, films that had a previously planned theatrical release but are initially made available on a commercial streaming or video on demand service may qualify. The success of at least one movie that went straight to on demand viewing instead of theaters, leading to another possible change in the film industry. Trolls World Tour, voiced by Justin Timberlake and Anna Kendrick, was forced to put off its theatrical opening, instead streaming into people's homes, reportedly earning Universal Studios $100 million in its first three weeks. 
classical. Universal saying they're so happy with the success that once coronavirus related restrictions are lifted, they may continue to release films on demand at the same time they premiere in theaters, sparking a strong reaction from the biggest theater chain in the country. AMC's CEO calling it unacceptable, adding going forward, AMC will not license any universal movies in any of our 1,000 theaters globally. And AMC says that is not an empty threat, but they are willing to discuss it further with Universal, which the studio has agreed to do. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. Some good news tonight. It's a wedding that could not be missed. The ceremony witnessed through a window. Coming up.